Welcome to the City of Spokane's Upriver Dam and Pumping Station. On one side, we have our dam and hydroelectric plant. On the other side, we have our pumping station, control room, and water quality laboratory. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a tour of our whole facility and we'll meet just some of our 170 essential employees here at the water department. All right, so let's get started and head out on our tour. The Spokane Water Department began in 1884 with one building and one pump in downtown Spokane. And at that time, we were pumping river water and sending it through a mile of pipe to downtown. Um, but unfortunately, the water quality started to, de to decline down there, so we needed to find a new location. And 1894, we moved upriver to the upriver dam and pumping station. And that's where we are right now. Uh, and we're still pumping river water and sending it to downtown Spokane. But then, guess what? Water quality declined up here because the little towns of Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls were growing in size. And do you know what people did with their sewage back then? They definitely didn't treat it. They put it right into the river. So we knew we needed to find yet another source. So in 1906, we tested the water that we found while we were building this facility and turned out that this water was crystal clear, super pure, really cold and perfect for drinking. And so in 1907, our very first well here was hand dug and we've been using aquifer water ever since. All right, let's go take a look. Hey, we're inside well one now and we are with Seth McIntosh, the superintendent here at Upriver. What's up? How you doing? Good, good. How cool is this aquifer? This is awesome. Right, you can see right down to the bottom, crystal clear, pure as can be. Um, so, how does water get underground in the first place? Well, luckily for us, we have this amazing aquifer and it's recharged by area lakes like Ponderé, Coeur d'Alene, Hayden, Liberty Lake. Um, the Spokane River is a main source of recharge and a little bit from precipitation. But about 50% of the water in the aquifer comes from the Spokane River, so they have a very special relationship. So in some stretches, the river recharges the aquifer, and other stretches, the aquifer recharges the river. So I like to think of them as best friends, which is why it's even more important that we conserve water. But we, today we get to also see uh, an archaic method of taking a water quality test. Seth, tell us about what you're doing. So this is one of the methods we use to take uh, raw water samples in our source water. Typically in all of our production wells, this is done with an electric powered pump motor. Uh, but in the case of, of failure in the motor, or we need to take a sample out of a reservoir or one of the wells, the pump is not working, we can use this baler method. So there's a little ball on the bottom there that holds the water in. We reel it up, get your bottle ready. All right. And look what we've caught today. So it's almost like having a bucket and dropping it in the well. Correct. It's, but a little bit more sophisticated. Yes, and both of the, this and the um, sample bottle here are sterilized so that we're only testing the water inside and not any contaminants that may be on the baler or the water. So we carefully pour this into our water bottle sample. The raw water samples are taken to outside laboratories. All of our regulatory samples are done here in house, and we do quite a few of those every day. There's your put lid. lid on there. All right, cool. Well, shall we go to the lab? Sounds great. Let's check it out. Right now, we're in the water quality laboratory with Doug Greenland, our water quality coordinator with the City of Spokane Water Department. Hi, Kristen. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, I'm going to be showing you a couple of tests that the water quality lab routinely does on the City of Spokane water. Awesome. So there's a multitude of tests that we do with to test your water, but uh, these are the two that we do the most. These are the two most routine ones. The first one that I'm going to demonstrate is uh, looking for chlorine. So. The city adds chlorine to all the water that we distribute throughout the city. And so we want to check and make sure that we're actually getting the dose that we want in there. So there, I just added an organic chemical called DPD and it should turn pink, which is good. And then we have a little handheld meter that has a light sensor in it that accurately measures the intensity of that pink color. So the more intense the pink color, the more chlorine it has. And then that meter is really way more accurate than your eyeball. Mm -hmm. So we have 0.32 parts per million chlorine, which is about what we want right now. 
down here at upriver. So this is a test that gets done every day and uh, multiple times multiple a day. times a day for many locations throughout the city. Cool. What another other tests? Another test that we routinely do is looking for coliform bacteria. So we'll have we have a distribution network of sampling points out throughout the city and we go out and we collect water samples and bring them back in these bottles and when they arrive we'll add a packet of indicator so there's a couple chemicals in here that will if there's coliform bacteria in here or a subset of that E. coli it reacts and it'll turn a goldenrod color if it's coliform bacteria and then E. coli will fluoresce underneath a black light so we'll add this to the water and then incubate it overnight just to see what grows and then you'll come back the next day and you can take a look. Earlier this week we collected some samples from our wells and a sample from the river and they've incubated and been in the oven and we pulled them out. So what we do is we take this bottle and then we'll pour it into this container here and it's got these tiny little cells so you can quantify how much coliform bacteria or E. coli is actually in your water. So these are uh, samples from a couple of our wells and they're clear. You can see that there's no color at all in there. For reference and to show you kind of what I'm talking about in terms of the color, we sample the river about once a month and this is a sample from the Spokane River that was collected on Monday. You'll see the goldenrod color that indicates that there's coliform bacteria in the river. And if you stuck under a black light, you'd see several of these cells fluorescing, indicating E. coli. And you've probably heard um, food recalls for E. coli. Oh, yeah. So it is a serious health issue. Yeah, so it makes people make really the, sick. Oh, really sick. Can, if you have you know, underlying health issues, it can be fatal. Yeah. So E. coli is a serious, serious issue. Coliform bacteria, the goldenrod color, as a great indicator, since there's nothing in the water we pump out of the ground, if we saw a sample in our distribution system that had this color, we would know something was getting in there. We'd have to do an investigation and find out what's, what's going on because that's not a normal yeah. situation for the city. But as you can see, we have high quality water that we distribute throughout the city. So we tell you we have good water, but we also do testing to confirm that we are, in fact, delivering yeah. you great water. We have proof. We Thank have goodness proof. our water looks like this and not like this one. You're welcome. That is nasty. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Have Thank a you, great Doug. Week. All right. Hey, we're at the Upriver Dam here with Jeannie Finger, our Chief Dam Safety Engineer, and we're about to perform a seep test. So, Jeannie, um, what is a seep test? Well, as you can see, we have water seeping through the auxiliary spillway of the dam, which is normal. And so what we want to do is come out here and measure the flow out of the seep, and then we just document that and track it over time. Okay. So can you help me do this today? I'm ready to take the time. All right, okay, so get the stopwatch ready. Okay, ready? We're gonna dip the bucket, set, ready, set, go. go. So measuring flow is always a, a time and quantity kind of calculation. Ready, stop. Okay. Okay, now what we're gonna do is measure the depth of what we collected. Okay, and it's about an inch and a half. And so we can calculate the, since we know the volume of the water, we know the time, we can calculate the gallons per minute. So we do that real quick. And so today it's flowing about two and a half gallons per minute out of this particular seat, which sounds about normal for this time of year. Yeah. Do you do a lot of math as a dam safety engineer? Yes, I do. I do use math. It's um, kind of every day I'm either using my calculator or I'm using spreadsheets on the computer. So that is pretty regular and and it's not harder than anything I did in school. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, what other types of things do you do? Well, we, so besides m measuring the flow from the seeps, we also measure other things at the dam like cracks, and we're basically documenting what we see over time because we don't want to see any changes. And then I write reports to summarize the data and analyze it, and then I turn in the reports to our regulators. So. That takes a lot of my time actually writing reports. 
So this is probably a fun part. Oh, of this is a great day when I can be out in the field and looking at the dam and spending some time doing data collection. Yeah, but all really important stuff because we dam failures can be catastrophic. Absolutely, and as you probably know, our dam is almost 100 years old. It's aging, so we're constantly having repairs and maintenance to keep it up. We do have an emergency action plan, though, and we notify the residents and the stakeholders all around the dam if we should notice anything unusual or any incidents, and we practice that once a year. So we feel pretty confident that we're going to be on top of it if we should see any kind of situation developing, definitely. And it might be kind of surprising that the city of Spokane has a dam in the first place. Um, what's the purpose of our dam here? Right, so you might think of dams as normally holding back water to form a lake, to go boating on or swimming. Well, that's not the kind of dam we have. This is a run of the river, so we basically let the flow go on by. But as you can see, we're diverting a portion of the water down the canal to our generators. And that's one thing I love about our system is that we're using hydropower to uh, generate electricity to power our pumps that is lifting the water from the ground and to deliver to our customers. So that's very the cool. purpose of our dam. Awesome, very cool. Well, thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. All right, let's go check out the powerhouses. Right now we are inside one of our powerhouses. This is the first one that was built in 1936. And inside here we have the generators running and one of our awesome mechanics, actually our foreman here, Carrie Rickman. Carrie, uh, tell us about what goes on in this building. Uh, this is one of uh, our original powerhouse. This is the smaller one. We have three two megawatt generators in here that we use to power our well pumps and whatever left over we sell to Avista. Nice, so we make a little money on the side? Yes, um, in 2020 we sold 51,000 megawatts to Avista. Which okay. I guess that would be 51 billion megawatts. Wow, okay, so can you break down megawatts for me? Yeah, it's a big number, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, this generator is capable of two megawatts total capacity. Uh, that is um, a couple hundred average homes, okay. or for a big number, 33,000 light bulbs. Okay. Wow. Yes. Well, yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, well, what other kind of what kind of things do mechanics do uh, around this facility? So the maintenance staff here, uh, tasked with the generators, uh, we have the hydraulic units here and we have brushes in the exciter for the turbine. And then down below, there's bearings and um, the seals to keep the river from coming in. It's all stuff that we maintain and look at on a daily basis. Yeah, pretty important you keep things running smoothly, right? Well, we have to because uh, keeping this running ensures our ability to keep our well pumps powered, giving um, the lowest possible cost for water. Yeah, awesome. You know what my favorite part is? Downstairs. Yeah. Shall we go? Sure. Okay. Now we're downstairs um, watching the turbine in action, and this is where the magic happens, yeah? Well, it's not really magic, it's science. Um, this is where the, the water comes into the generator, goes through the wicket gates, falls on the turbine. The turbine looks like a propeller. But Water falling is what's causing the shaft to turn and generate the electricity. Cool. So does this run all year long? Uh, we would like that, but no, not really. Um, we're, we're a run of the river operation, so we're entirely dependent on how much river flow we get. Spring runoff, we generate a lot. Summertime, when the river slows down, we cannot, some days we can't generate. What's happening up above us here? Up above us here is the stator and the rotor. Those are the components that actually generate the electricity by breaking a magnetic field. That is the power that we send out to power our pumps. Cool. Let's go see where that energy is in action. Sounds good. Let's go. Right. 
We are now inside one of our seven well stations. And actually, although it doesn't quite look like it, we're underground just a few feet. And right below us is one of our wells here we call Well Electric. And the aquifer is right below that. You just can't see it because there's a concrete floor on top of it. And the only thing that touches the aquifer is our pumps below. I spy Jeff over there working on one of the pumps. Let's go check it out and see what he's doing. Hey, Jeff. Hello. Man, these are some big pumps. Yes. These are some of our biggest ones that uh, we have in our well stations. They're uh, seven or 8,000 gallons a minute, but this is our biggest one we have in the system. It's a 1,000 horsepower motor driving the pump that will pump out 13,500 gallons per minute. Wow. OK, so underneath us right now is aquifer, right? Yep, just under this floor is the aquifer water, yes. Okay, and then how deep does this pump go down? It goes down close to the bottom. The bottom where the rock bed is, uh, it's about 33 feet down. Okay. So we're really close wow. in this well. 13,000 plus gallons a minute. Yes. And then it goes, I can follow the line here up to this transmission main, and do you know what area of town that goes to? Yes, this one is goes to our low system. So the middle of town, downtown, right in the middle. Okay, cool. Yep. Do all the pumps go to the same place here? No, actually all three of these go to a different spot. Um, this one goes to our intermediate, so it gets the water moving up the south hill. And then uh, this one is our north hill, north hill system. And so that's headed north and the middle of town. Wow. Or middle of the north side of town. That's pretty cool. Now this pump looks quite different than these pumps. Yeah, we have a couple different styles. Uh, this is a, an older looking pump, because it is in an older style. It's a horizontal, horizontal uh, split case pump. So it's all above ground, or above the water. Mm -hmm. These ones, you can't see the pump, because they are down submerged underwater, and they're a vertical line shaft pump. Wow. And this pump has been here since this facility was built, really. Yes. Yeah, yep. so it's almost Origin. 100 years old. Original. And thanks to mechanics like you, it's still running. Yes. That's pretty impressive. What, uh, what other kinds of things do you do for the city? Uh, we maintain all the pumps. And so at the well stations, there's 24 pumps in the well stations. And then we have another 68 pumps in the outlying stations that are booster stations. So. <clears throat> Lots of pumps, and then at all those stations, we are responsible for the facility itself, um, the heating and air conditioning, and lights, and whatever needs to be done with the facility. Yeah. And the power's coming from the hydroelectric side, right, the plant, and then run powering these pumps. Yes, this well, uh, these pumps are powered up by our hydro generation. It's, goes to two of the well sites, and this is one of them. This is one of them. That's, that's pretty cool. Yes. And do you work on that side too, the hydroelectric side? I do. Side? Yep. I, uh, I work at one of the powerhouses, but we, we share the load as far as the, what needs to be done. Okay. Awesome. Um, but who actually starts and stops the pumps, like gets them going? Uh, our operators have full control of when they need to start and stop them. You just make sure they're running. I just make sure they're running nice. and keep running and preventive maintenance and repair. Okay, very cool. Well, I think I'm going to head to the control room now. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome to our final stop on our tour. We're in the control room with Joe Conley, one of our operators. Hey, Joe. How's it going? Good. Tell me about what you're doing here. So uh, I'm the shift operator on duty. We're currently actually uh, uh, operating and maintaining the entire city's water system. Uh, running across the bottom here, we have our, our well site. This is where we actually pull water out of the aquifer. And then we start boosting it up the hill uh, in order to uh, try and maintain water pressure in certain sections of the city of Spokane uh, in order to get the uh, uh, water high enough for gravity to take care of the pressure and maintain everybody's water system. Uh, at the same time, also uh, uh, getting it high enough for the firefighters to be able to do their job if there's a fire in the area. Wow, so and our system's pretty big here. It looks like we have a lot of equipment anyway. Yeah, actually, our, uh, our system's really quite large. Uh, if you refer over to the map here, you could actually see where we stretch out all the way past five mile. 
Uh, we actually even go down past Eagle Ridge and uh, the Moran Prairie area and each one of these individual colors actually represents our pressure zones that we're actually boosting water up to. Very cool. So you have a really important job here. We do. Making sure we have enough water and that it's quality, right? Yeah, yeah. Maintaining the, uh, the system uh, doesn't just include uh, uh, the volume of water that we pump. We actually include our uh, quality of water. Pumping out of the aquifer, we don't have to do a lot of treatment, but we do actually make sure we maintain a proper chlorine residual for everybody's drinking water. Nice. You do some work for the hydroelectric side too, yeah? Yep, that's correct. So uh, we also, on top of doing all of this, we do a hydroelectric power plant. Uh, we actually uh, operate the, you know, the city of Spokane's only hydroelectric power plant, uh, maintaining the Spokane River and maximizing the uh, generation in order to get the most pumpage that we can on our own electricity. That's so cool. So we're running, creating energy, running our pumps, and you're monitoring the whole process. Yep, that's correct. We do that uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year, uh, 24 hours a day. Wow, sounds like you're pretty busy. We are, we're always here monitoring the system to make sure everything is uh, just perfect for somebody who wants to open their tap. Awesome, well, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us today. If you are curious and wanna learn more information, go to waterwisespokane.org.